Hello there. Sorry for the wait. Um, just had to sort a few things out whilst we're getting ready to go live there. But hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. As you've probably seen by the thumbnail and the and the text on the uh, video description, I'm going to try and make a spoiler. Um, first of all, though, uh, been a, a funny old week really. We've had days of snow and been told that we can no longer do click and collect. Um, so here at the shop, things have been a bit of a trial. I was hoping to do more than one live video a week. Uh, I've got a few projects lined up, things that I want to do, but I just haven't had the time. Um, it's a couple of commissions, thankfully. <laughs> it's always good to know that people are still out there and thinking about you. Um, I've got one here. It's actually the same wallet design I've been making for the last few weeks, but this one's got a slight modification to it in the fact that it's uh, the pouches aren't for the cards aren't sewn down the side there. There's an extra piece of leather in here. This allows more storage for cards. The person I'm making it for, um, the, I haven't got the strength in the fingers anymore. I've got a little bit of arthritis. So trying to get the card out through the side here down the spine isn't going to work so well for them. This just gives them more access. I'll finish that off as soon as I can. Uh, I've just literally got to sew around the outside edge of it and uh, burnish the edges, and that one's done. Um, I will put up on screen because I've been learning this technology. So I should be able to show you this. There we go. That is an EDC or an everyday carry. And an everyday carry can have whatever items you want in it because the whole point is it's something that you would use to carry your everyday items. As you can see, this has got a very large key ring loop on it, a space for a pen and a knife. It's a small folding knife just used for opening packaging. Um, Ah, uh, hello, afternoon. Yes, <laughs> hi there. See the comment there. Uh, yeah, the um, the gentleman is a driver, and he just wants to be able to have access to his pen and his knife um, on a regular basis throughout the day. So that's that's the idea with that. Uh, very pleased with how it came out. I used some quite heavy uh, oiled and wax tanned leather. Very good stuff, and that was actually a very, very strong keyring loop. He could probably have sale off a building with that. So hopefully it will work out well for him. Um, as you always, with anything I make, I put my guarantee on it. You saw my mark on there. That means that if he should have any problems, he can come back to me and I will repair them. Uh, what else was there? Oh, yeah, last time, last stream, I kept on calling it a, a stitching pony, and I kept meaning to say stitching horse, but I said I'd try and put a picture up of it. Since I've just learned how to do this, here we go. So for those of you that are interested, this is a stitching horse. As you can see, there's quite a large wide clam in front of the seat area that you would use to hold your leather work. Uh, there's a, a little foot lever that is attached to one jaw of the clam and that is used to uh, adjust your tension. So you don't actually have to keep putting your needles down. Like you see me when I'm stitching, I have to uh, adjust the leather work every now and then. I keep on putting the needles down, and that's why they've got the uh, got the bank magnets built into the jaws so that you don't lose them easily or at the end of a long piece of thread. Uh, the idea there is that you can just slacken it off by using your foot to control that lever and hook it behind the metal bits like the teeth, uh, depending on the width of your of your leather work. So fingers crossed, when we get hold of that, I'm very excited about that. Um, fingers crossed it will be a, a good purchase and it'll also potentially help the videos as well because I'll have a bit more of a, like a sewing place to be. I've got a little problem with sewing at the moment. This morning whilst I was working on that commission, I actually broke my, uh, uh, my stitching clamp. Really cheesed off. What's happened is there's a, there's a little captive nut in there. And when you're adjusting your leather work, you, you undo this, this spring forces the uh, jaws apart. And what happened was this threaded bolt that's all very neatly placed inside here and part of this mechanism, it, it kind of uh, lost its thread. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of, uh, hello, valued customer. Yeah. <laughs> why, why isn't the chat box coming up? Why, why can't I see?
don't know. Still learning this technology, obviously. <laughs> it worked last time. Where is it? Let's remove that one. Yes, loud dinging noise. And remove this one. Don't need that anymore. Hopefully that might get people's comments coming up on screen again. Fingers crossed. I don't know why I'm not doing that, sorry. I will respond, obviously, because I can see it at my end on my computer screen. Apologies for that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this is forked. The, I tried trimming the end off the bit that the threaded itself. Uh, it's down here on the floor somewhere, probably, in the vice. Um, but the thread isn't long enough to now read trap by so. Lovely. Good job I've got more than one. It's a bit bigger than the other one, so I will plan it to the table as, as and when needed. So, getting on with the sporran. Now, I must talk a little bit about how I got this pattern, because uh, it isn't my pattern. It's not something that I've designed. Uh, I've been signed up to and trying to do a course, and I confess trying to. Uh, the troubles of running a business, your own business in its first couple of years, plus the pandemic. We were very busy this summer, believe it or not. Um, we were making face masks, so we were extremely busy. So it meant I haven't had a great deal of time to do a lot of the coursework, but the gentleman that runs this uh, course, I should probably mention the name of it, it's Black Raven Armoury. It's, um, apologies if I pronounce your surname wrong, Alex Agricole. Um, he has been making armour and period accurate items and things like that for a very long time. Sorry, I don't want to make it sound like you've been around for decades. But I think you have. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I have to confess. But the gentleman has opened up his knowledge and his library. Um, he is uh, uh, giving people access to everything that he's learned. He's self-taught, but he was, he taught himself before the internet came about. So he's gone to other people. He's gone to reference libraries. He, he has taught himself, I guess, in the hard way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've seen comments coming up on here, and I don't know why they're not coming up on the screen for everybody. But yes, the, I'm getting comments from somebody I know who was actually helping us this summer. Um, he, I do recall, yes, you were poking yourself a lot in the finger with needles and things. So yeah, pins, I think it was. He was pinning the masks for us, weren't you? So yeah, <laughs> he says he's still healing. <laughs> it's been a few months. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, um, Alex's Academy, it's um, been going for a couple of years now, a few years. Um, I confess to being a student, but not an extremely accurate, uh, a active one because I've just been too busy. But some of the things that he's made available to his students, as well as his knowledge, um, he, he makes patterns available to us. Um, I have here a pattern for three pouches. You see, this is Black Raven Armoury, three pouches to build. I have been licensed to produce 25 copies of each of these pouches. Um, I spoke to Alex briefly yesterday, uh, just mainly to make sure he was okay with me broadcasting it live, making one, and he was very accommodating. Um, I was actually happy to see someone doing this, but also mentioned that the last time he made these particular patterns was actually for Outlander. Now, I Confess, I don't know the program. It's not the kind of program I watch. Um, if things don't blow up, then I tend not to watch the program. Uh, it's a very simple way of looking at things. <laughs> hey, we all know what we like. Um, but anyway, these these pans were uh, pouches that were made for the show, apparently. Um, I might actually have to sit down and watch it and see if I can spot them. Uh, they're quite distinctive. Because, and because of that, I'm, I'm assuming that these are kind of period accurate. Um, and I'll go into a bit more detail as to why I'm making that assumption, apart from the fact that they were made for a TV series and they tend to want to have something that at least looks the part. So I'm assuming that that's why they were made that way. 
So the one that I'm attempting today is the Sporin. Now, I've done a little bit of preparation work. I have at least read the instructions. But they've all come with uh, a simple one page of instructions, which is very useful. But there is a, a, book, a book bag and a kite pouch. It's called a kite pouch mainly because of its shape. I'll see if I can show you a better image of these. Go. So, uh, uh, like that. That's all back to front, isn't it? Sorry. But that is a kite pouch. It's quite a deep pouch, and as you can see, it can be belt mounted. Same goes with the uh, foot pouch as well. That can also be belt mounted. But you can also see that there's some decorative carving on these as well. Uh, let's bring you back to me. Yeah, there's some decorative carving on here. I'm not going to attempt that today because it'll just take too long. It's case leather, you spend time tracing it on. I will possibly do that as a separate video or a separate session where I, if I was going to decorate with these pouches, because uh, apart from one thing, a bit of colouring as well, um, some dyeing, things like that are always going to help that kind of uh, design work. So this is all going to be done today using some of the leather that I've got in the shop. There is going to be no decorations or dyings or anything like that going into these, um, mainly because there isn't a huge amount of leather involved in the sparring. It's not quite like the, uh, the two other two bags that we've got here where there's a large surface area that can be decorated. So I have made no attempt to try and make this before today. So fingers crossed this all goes well. Wow, you have read. Do, do you mean I can read? Yes, I can read. He's a cheeky little boy. <laughs> so I've downloaded um, the uh, patterns. Obviously, that's where I got the instructions from. But these, uh, let's do this right. So these patterns, um, I've cut them all out. Uh, this is the reinforcement part of the of the pattern. This is the part that's going to go form part of the lid. It goes down around the back of the uh, of the item. Um, it has no visible belt loop attachment on it. I'm going to assume that the belt would actually go behind the uh, behind the lid part before it's folded over, um, and then it's secured in place with straps. And that's the front part of it. So you can see in the image here, actually, if I do that, when it's laid out flat, this is what it will look like, basically. Now, there's only one part I haven't cut out yet, because I have, I have cut out a marked up, the front bit, the two straps, and the reinforcement. Um, I've done the edge burnishing on the two straps. I haven't done so yet on these two pieces. I didn't want to have to do too much of that because it's not exactly the most entertaining thing, We're just sitting there rubbing a piece of leather with a bit of cloth. Uh, the, I've had to slightly modify it because the buckle I have in the shop, I've either got tiny little buckles like this, or I've got whacking great buckles. Neither are, are amazingly suitable, but that's all I could find. So I'm going to use that, and I had to make this slightly narrower. Sorry, I keep, I keep forgetting I've got that bit in the corner over there. Bit there. So these straps will now fit through here. He says, tumbling things. There you go, so I've got a better fit there. Yes, the, the, I like the colour of this leather as well. Um, the camera is not quite representing it properly, but it's a good colour leather. Uh, it's just a couple of off-cut pieces because I'm really starting to wrap my head around the idea of how to make my waistcoat, and this is the leather I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's quite thin, quite flexible. It's quite well suited to this kind of thing. Uh, I really must try and get the comments to appear on the screen. Why weren't they on there? They were on there. Is it a layering issue? I don't know. Oh well, uh, something else to look into. Another time, maybe.
not whilst you're live streaming, Ben. Come on. Uh, the pattern, the instructions also say we're going to need some rivets. And the noise that I'm making down the back here, these are the copper sandless rivets that I prefer to use. I have got some of the speed. Have I got the chat box display? Yes, you see, I, I, I have. It should be in this corner here. It's all loaded up in the feed. I don't know why it's not coming through. Yeah. Well, never mind. So, yeah, the copper rivets that I prefer to use, I will do so. Um, it means a little bit of noise, but, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, they're going to hold better, last longer. Uh, the speed rivets and the tubular rivets and stuff that you can buy these days um, aren't exactly amazing. You can, if you spend enough time looking for them and go out and buy them, and you can get some reasonable ones. But I've got these in stock, so I'm going to use these. Let's move these out of the way. So I'm just going to put these to one side because I do have one more piece that needs to be cut out. And that's the main body of the bag. Now, you can see, I can only just about get this into frame. It's quite large. It really is quite a big, well, a big piece of leather. It's already marked up on the uh, on the suede that I'm going to use. And this is the suede that I've been using for the linings of my wallets as well. Um, there's the deer hide. Uh, it will use quite a large amount of it. So this will be ostensibly quite a special sporran because it's going to use this leather that is a uh, limited edition stuff that I can get from my supplier and this is something I picked up at uh, like a renaissance fair I suppose it was something that I this particular type of leather I can't get hold of again very easily I have been looking to try and get some more of it and I'm kicking myself for not having bought more of it at the time yeah but even so I will use this I have nabbed a pair of scissors from the shop because I think the easiest way that I can cut this instead of using a knife because it, it moves and shifts a lot and it's a circle and I've always hated cutting circles. I'm just going to use a pair of scissors. Not very leather worky like, is it? Where's your knife, Ben? Hopefully this pair of scissors will go through. Yeah, yeah, look, these work all right. Yeah. Uh, he says, yet again, behind the, uh, behind the display. All right, this shouldn't take too much. I'm just going to trim around this as neatly as I can. You can tell I'm concentrating, can't you? Because it's gone quiet. That's a good point. Test widgets. <laughs> Did you see that? Well, the widgets are working. Oh, keep going. Just looking at the security camera, I can see some people approaching the shop. So bear with me, I may need to note the walking way. Right. So thing with the current lockdown regulations, we've had to stop the click and click, like I said at the beginning of the uh, video. Uh, but it doesn't stop people from approaching the shop for some reason. So I've got all the blinds down. Um, even though I've got to have the lights on in order to do the recording, uh, I've got no way of hiding the fact that I'm actually in here. I've 
got a sign on the door saying, basically, I, I can't serve you at the door anymore. I can't let you in the shop. I just wish I wish we could. I really wish we could let people in. It's apart from one thing. It's how I make my living. You know? But yeah, we've just gotta play by the rules, keep everybody safe. Gotta do the right thing, you know. I'm doing this very, very carefully. I'm not going to be able to do anything with the edge of this. Can't burnish it, can't hide it in any way. It's going to be very visible, I think, in the uh, final part of the bag. I'm hoping this suede is a uh, a good choice for the bag, not just with the colour, but also with the properties of the uh, suede itself. Because this is, um, say, so deer hide. Uh, I believe has been uh, finished with smoke. It gives it this colour. So there you go. That's that cut out. It's huge, isn't it? You can see, I possibly see in the camera, you can see these little dots. I'm going to cut these holes using the uh, hole punches I've got here. I'm going to try not to blow holes right through this again. Yeah, that's the same size one. Put up the other oh, Ooh. Well, it's quite tough, this stuff. There we go. That went through. Now, these holes are basically for the draw cord to close the sporum with. That's why I've got some cord here. Which I've picked up the black one. I do have some brown over there, I think. It's quite a dark brown. So, we'll have a look at it. Is that coming through? Can you hear that? There's a, there's a little uh, desktop bell over over this, over here. Every time, I, every time I smack the counter with this, it rings. <laughs> the customers get our attention. I'm going to put that somewhere else. There we go. <laughs> Well, we can't let anybody in the shop, so there's not much point in it being, being on the desk anymore. There you go. Oops, didn't go right away. There we are. So as I mentioned before, Black Raven Academy, the, uh, I've put a link in the description if you want to, if you want to check them out. Um, becoming a student does mean that you get a lot of support from Alex and you get uh, a lot of cool stuff. Um, the material in the course I've downloaded so far, there's been lots of very really nice, cool patterns to uh, carve. Um, I must say to add, pay attention to any kind of copyright restrictions on things because not all of it is for commercial use. Uh, sometimes it's just for personal use. So please pay attention to that and respect it. Um, but have a look at the course. Have a look at the information that's there. I've enjoyed what I've managed to do so far. <laughs> and I've seen 
on the Facebook group for the, my year's course, I've seen a lot of what other people have been producing using the uh, using the lessons, and it's amazing. There's some incredibly talented people out there, and it looks like the coursework that Alex gives you really just pushes you that little bit further and challenges you. I will sit down and spend more time. I <laughs> I promise. Because apart from one thing, it's gonna it's gonna help me professionally, personally. It's gonna help my business. You know, skills that I can learn from it. I'm always willing to learn. Like I say in a channel description, I'm I'm not the best. I don't claim to be the best. I'm just doing what I love, sharing it. Mostly, I'm hitting things with hammers or mauls. Daughter loves all those little dots. Should probably try and pick them up later for her. Something else just fell off the desk, sorry. I don't know if you can hear it as well. There's a lot more banging going on. It's not me. It's in the background. Uh, there's some builders working on a building across the street. Even though they're a good 30, 40 metres away, I can hear them quite clearly. So they're obviously smacking something quite hard over there at the moment. There we go. All right, let's say that that'll be what I pass the draw cord through when I get to that stage. All right, so what do the instructions say? It's always good to read the instructions, isn't it? Well, sparring, uh, da, 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 cut the bag reinforcement, bag reinforcement, and bag front from thick leather. Okay, the leather I'm using is not very thick. At this point, you can add any decoration to these parts you might want, such as tooling, bevel the edges, slick die, and edge coat both parts. Right, I've done most of that already. Cut the pouch from the complementary coloured suede or soft leather. It's easier to add the buckles and straps at this point rather than after the bag has been sewn together. And I'll need six rivets. Ooh, goody, I get to hit more things with hammers. Right, uh, well, it's going to go that way around, I think. So I think this will work best in appearance like this. Yeah. Out of the way. So yes, right now is probably the best point to sort these straps out. Add holes. So that's, oh, I see, so go there like that. Or the other way around. Look at the picture, Ben, that will help. So there's the picture, that's describing how it should go. So, that bit goes that way around there ish. The wider end is where the buckle goes. Right. Wider end of that. So, not the holes through there, so they're going to go that way, that way. Is that how it looks in the picture? Yeah, they're on the top. Okie dokie. There's a couple of loops there, and that's what those holes are there for. Right, okay. We shall figure this out.
as I said, I haven't done this before. I haven't made this pattern. I've never made this item. Let's do the buckle first. As I say, the straps, I've already done the burnishing on the edges for. Now, I followed the pattern exactly, but then after I'd uh, made the marks on here, realised that I had the uh, wrong width for the buckle, or I should say the wrong buckle for the width that I cut. So they're all slightly off center in the middle here at the moment. Let's move that out of the way too. It's not an elbow room. One thing I also noticed with the pattern, uh, let me show you on this because it's to hand. The circle here and these two lines describe where the stitching will go. Now, looking at the image as well that I've got on, the, on here, the camera probably can't see it all that clearly, but there is literally uh, ooh, may, maybe a centimetre between each stitch, or each stitch is like a, a centimetre. It's quite large. Normally, I'm stitching at seven stitches an inch, which is what the uh, these tools are used for. They mark out your, evenly your stitching. So this is one of the reasons why I'm assuming that this is a period accurate piece. Um, the yeah, the I would imagine they wouldn't have anything like a modern needle, needle and thread at all. Uh, probably, if this was being made several hundred years ago, it would have been a, a piece of bone that had been sharpened with uh, using maybe a piece of sinew or some cordage, maybe made from bramble or nettle or something like that to create a length of strong fibre um, or potentially Sorry, processed. I don't know that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's really ruined my train of thought there. <laughs> Just to prove it's live. <laughs> okay, yeah, so they wouldn't have been able to get that finer stitching that we use today with modern needles and threads. Um, it wouldn't have been waxed or anything like that at all, potentially. I don't know, they might have done that. That's a good point. I don't know. So it's quite large stitches, and if I were to follow this pattern, which I'm tempted to do, because apart from one thing, it will be quicker. It is literally just punching a small hole and then sewing right the way through. Uh, I do have a round awl rather than my diamond shaped awl I would normally use if I was doing the seven stitches an inch. Um, so I was having an hour about how to do this, so I think I'll just make the decision then and do it. I'll do it the way that the pattern shows traditional way I believe. Okay, I won't be using a piece of sharpened bone to poke through the uh, leather and I won't be using sinew or homemade cordage. I will just use normal thread. Uh, but I will try and stick to the suggestion here of the shape and size and function of the uh, stitching. So you can see on this one I'll mark this out on the uh, piece like so. I'll use my awl in a minute and I'll punch through those. Also make these holes. We're gonna make that hole with the crew punch. You see that that hole is very, very wide, isn't it? That's the strap that's gonna go through it. I don't think I've got a small enough crew punch for that. Yeah. I don't know if that would actually make a make the hole right, if you see what I mean. It's close. It's really close. Well, you can always make the hole bigger, Ben. You can't make the hole smaller. All right. I see. So, screw punch hole in there, fold that over, rivet it. As I say, the design also shows a much larger buckle being used in the image here much larger buckle. See, I can probably get away with doing a smaller fold over. Ah, oh, sorry, I keep putting my hands behind that 
window up there, don't I? Tell you what. There we go. Is that better? Oh, thank you. Okay. Just received a message saying that um, my friend here has possibly solved what's wrong with the chat box. Um, and I'll get a message after the stream to fix it. So apologies, but you if you're watching on YouTube, it should be poking up the um, putting up the uh, chat on the side of the side of the window video window do hickey bit. Oh yeah, I'm really good with words. Yeah, drink your cold cup of tea, Ben. So, punching the earls. There are fancy little ways I've seen of people doing this to that's a good point actually. I'll fix that. Is it gonna leave enough room? Let's move it back a little bit. I've seen people using um wing dividers and things like that to get the uh, crew punch in the right place in the middle and stuff like that. Uh, personally, I tend to eyeball it, put a little mark in there and then proceed with confidence, hit it with a hammer. So I'm just checking to make sure the crew punch hole is big enough. Just about, it's not quite big enough. The trouble is I, I only have the uh, this one, the small one here, or I've got a big one I put them here, it'd be easier. So this is the one that I would use for belt buckles, and this is the one for smaller strap buckles. But it's not quite big enough for this one. I'll just uh, line it up part way. Guestimate it. Okay. Yeah, that works. Ah, uh, I can see. Were you blind? Somehow. <laughs> what can you see, Lord Yogi? Oh, Yogi Fiber Ten. Uh, that's your name here, isn't it? Your Lord Yogi is the one you use. Yeah, never mind. Um, all right, so just need to rivet that on there. Pinch L for that. Small approve, small punch for that one. A little larger side. So I'm completely ignoring the previous spacings and holes and things like that. I was tempted to ignore all the rivets and just go ahead and uh, sew everything. You know, it's one of those ums and ahs. I might do that for another bag or the same pouch. And I'll, uh, instead of using rivets, I'll hand sew it. But the problem is that that kind of, it very much changes the item. It very much changes the item. Not just the feel and appearance of it, but also the price. Uh, <laughs> There we go, so that goes through there. Where's my little jeweler's block gone? It's around it somewhere.
Found it. Side cutters as well. Be very careful if you ever do this. When you snip through this copper pin, it comes out fast. Or can do. So always cover it with your hand or something and cut it. Checking. Make sure I'm leaving enough. Cover up my hand. So I'm your lord and master on any account. I just haven't updated on here. Okay. <laughs> you wanted a job? <laughs> yes, I do know this gentleman that's talking to me here on chat. That's the bit that comes off. See, it's got a sizable piece of metal. <laughs> you don't want that pinging off into your eyeball, do you? One done. One done. Do I need rivets anywhere else? Obviously, I do need more rivets. Where am I putting the other rivets? Ooh, I haven't done the edging on this, have I? Yes, I didn't want a job and still looking. Yeah. Well, at the moment, we ain't got enough money. Enough money for ourselves, yeah. We'll wait for the government to pay us. Oh, there he is. I'd employ a Yolky Fiver, but... I'll keep my own job alive first. Put a little bit of a uh, token hole on the edges here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Keep forgetting where my hands are in relation to the camera. Yeah, I, I realise that I could say your name, but I I tend not to say people's real names online. I, I'll happily keep using your handle, but uh, I leave that down to somebody else's decision. I, I've made the decision to come out here and use my real name and use it happily, but that's not something I make. That's not a decision I make for other people. <laughs> Yeah. Some people from outside being noisy. This stuff burnishes so easily that just wiping the token hole on with my finger is enough to start the burnish and start to shine up. I barely have to rub it with the cloth. <laughs> There's no effort. I 
things. Oh, I'll keep moving my hands up though, sorry. I might need to reposition this camera. You can just see I'm rubbing it with my finger and it's changing. Right, there, that's just one more side to do. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna move the camera so it's easy. I'm being threatened to have someone come around here and just draw a box where I'm gonna have to put my hands. I kind of hope that I'd remember because I've got the cutting mat underneath me, but I think that's a <laughs> yeah, yeah. A hand fetish might uh... <laughs> might be a, an added complication. I think. Um... <laughs> Is that a thing? Hand fetishes? Or have I led a sheltered life here? You don't have to answer that one. Bit here. Oh, I'm using the cloth. <laughs> Just put it on my finger. I'm pretty sure it's not toxic. It's a fetish for everything. Same as kinks. Okay. I feel enlightened. <laughs> right, okay, that's the edges of that done. So I need to put this strap, this strap. Not that it really matters because the camera is not focusing on that bit. Just check and make sure it's still in focus. Hopefully it is. Apologies if not. Still working with limited technology. Right, which end is where I've got the strap. Excuse me. We should turn this technology off, shouldn't I? Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> oh, you're weird. <laughs> Everybody is somebody else's weirdo. Okay. That's just. Uh, uh, that's pretty central to me, just kind of following the dots because I know the spacings on that are going to be roughly the same. Ooh. I'm trying not to use too heavy a hammer. I know what happened. I'll just go straight through this this pound over hat again. 
And I've got, I marked up dots from the pattern onto here, but I'm just going to use this to make sure I've got the spacings about right. Otherwise, let me mark that. There we go. Eureka, they match up. All right, a couple more of these. These really are too long for the leather. Just like being in the shop. They really are too long for the thickness of leather that I've got here, but as I say, it's what I had in stock. Maybe left a bit too much of a tail on that one. That again. That's good. Check the uh, comment smooth and onto me rough edges on it. Maybe doing these a little bit too tight. It's distorting the leather slightly because it's, like it's very thin leather. It should be a bit thicker. So that's on there. I have made marks for the uh, bit on the back there for the buckle to go through, but I haven't made those just yet. It'll be simple enough to do those when I've done the actual item, just to make sure I get them in the right place kind of thing. So where's this bit going? Sort of the, uh... So that one goes, it's going there, right. I'll find my magic pen. Ah! <laughs> the uh, silver marks are on here, the pen marks. It's a, a, a pen that I can I buy to mark leather with. It's, it's designed to mark leather. It's silver, so you can see it on most colors. Uh, but this pen here, this one, removes the marks. I'll just dab a bit of that on there. And just put it on there, give it a little bit of time. Uh, the Whatever liquid this is in here evaporates well enough and takes the silver mark with it. Awesome. So just in case you're going to have it somewhere that might be visible, you can just remove it. And when that dries, that'll be gone. All right. Roughly, that's pretty central. <laughs> yeah, something else just fell over. <laughs> 
go ahead and do the same thing again on here. They match up quite nicely. Ow. All right. Now oh, it's going on there. More limits. Run away. <laughs> Not so, yeah, okay. No comment. I'm hoping that the uh, beaten appearance of the rivets will look traditional enough in this situation. Because um, they wouldn't have had a speed rivet or a nice neatly domed rivet necessarily. Uh, back in the whatever time this kind of sparring would have been used. Um, just hoping it adds to the aesthetic of the, of the pouch. Right I think I'm done with that for the moment. Do we need rivets anywhere else? No. Doesn't look like we do. Those other holes are on here. There's obviously a hole to put the strap through. And then there's holes for a bit of... Uh, a bit of Oh, do 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 that. I'm in an army about that, you can tell. Instructions say to basically put the put the thong through the holes on here, through these, and that would be what the uh, cordage goes through. Let me just refocus the camera to this case. Come on. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the cordage goes through there and gives you this appearance here. You can see that. These two loops here. So, how am I going to secure it? I don't know whether or not the contact adhesive will be strong enough. Could always put a stitch through it. I don't think this stuff's quite wide enough. So what I'll do is I'll cut a piece off, I'll sky the ends so I get a nice long overlap so I can get lots of glue in there and hopefully give it strength. If it doesn't work, think of something else. I'm following the instructions. So instead of finding the holes in the circular piece that so you have two loops showing on the outside. Once the circuit is down, the strap on the pouch will go through the thonging. 
plumbing will be secured, can be secured with a little contact adhesive. So the bag to the main reinforcement and so on the circle. It says contact adhesive. Let's try that then. And then the other question was, do I just go with this size crew punch hole, which is roughly the same size as these, these straps? Or do I go with the design, which is much larger hole? Much, much larger hole. There it is. So I've got a big toolbox sitting here. Uh, might have to show you that one day, but there's a big toolbox just here to the side that's got all my stuff in it. And a lot of stuff I probably don't need. And a general mess. <laughs> Well, let's go with the uh, larger hole. Let's mark it in place like that. I know I've got it drawn on the other side, but it always looks better if I punch through from this side because it'll look odd from the other side. It didn't matter so much on these because I'm covering it up with a rivet. So I'm just going to do this this way. Eyeball it, eyeball it as well. Yep, that went through. Yeah, so it still looks quite neat that way around. And I haven't done the token on the edge of this one yet either. Right, do that next. Now, this was a, a larger punch. Marked it on there. I think it's going to be stitch holes, isn't it? Yeah, I've got a plan for that. We have a plan for that one. <laughs> Silver pens come off on the uh, work surface, but see, it wasn't far off. So on, on. Is that dried out yet? So you can. Yeah, you see. No silver mark. Still drying. Show you this black. Uh, yeah, a bit of trial and error and yeah, make a small hole first. But I just went ahead and made a big hole. I strongly suspect that you, you might, either I'm not paying attention or you might be a minute or two behind me. Well, here's the brown. It's still quite a contrast, isn't it, in the colour? But maybe not as stark as the black. I'm going to go with the brown. The last two I've got, I need to get some more of these. So we just need enough to make a little loop, don't we? It's a little, but a loop. I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to overlap it. At least yay much, so let's cut that there. Mm. 
and assume that the next one should be the same size. Do it the other way around, then it'll be easier. Skyving knife. How much was I ever a dozen units for this? I'll do some. Okay. Ramp does look better, and um, yeah, slight, slight delay. <laughs> Probably something on YouTube's end as well. Uh, well, that looks good, doesn't it? Just put a dot of glue on that sky, and yeah, I think brown was the right choice, wasn't it? I'd like to give this the best possible chance to stick, so I'm going to let this cure and warm it up before sticking it. Sheath it. Wouldn't want to, want to accidentally touch that. Yuck. That bit in there. Yeah. That cure for the moment. Right. These bits. That bit might actually be long enough to do this with, but if not, I've got a piece that I didn't take a couple of inches off of. So we shall see. Let's put that to one side as well. <laughs> I realize you can't see this, but just outside of the camera, always tools. There's like, this is the only free piece of worktop I've got at the moment that's got something on it. So just give me a moment. I'm going to put a few things away. It says I've got some elbow room. <laughs> figure it is if I mark these holes on here and then I'll punch through punch through this into that with the needle or an awl or something <laughs> so how how would you use a, a sparring from uh, when he, what the comment means magic is uh, magic the gathering which is a card game um, like a, a trading card game and I, I would say Possibly keep your counters or your uh, dice in it. Make a fantastic dice bag, wouldn't it? I mean, it's huge. Won't it double up for D and D then as well, Dungeons and Dragons. Just a thought. Hmm, cold tea. <laughs> yes, yes, you've watched me work before, Yorkie. 
I'm not letting you see everything else that's in here at the moment, but there, there's, yeah, I, I'm not the tidiest worker. I know, but it's a failing. But it's just how we are. I've got a little side project going on over here. I'm making a cushion cover out of off cuts. Um, but that means that it's off cuts of leather all over the work surface over there with a cushion in the middle of it. How to do this? Obviously, I want them in a nice straight line. So, how about I mark the two end ones? But that will all go that I had earlier. <laughs> it's fallen down the side of the drawer. Yeah. So. Nasty little all this one. My wife bought it for me. Anyway, yeah, focus with that. Quite sharp. Yeah, it would work as a die bag, I think. You know, for keeping your dice in. I think it worked quite well for that. All right. Punch through the pattern like that. Like that. I should be able to see those on there. So they look about a centimetre apart, these stitch holes. It's a fraction over a centimetre. Oh, now I'm done. Doing it again. Put it here. They look about 12 mil to me. I can't do my 12 times table. Guessing it's cold in the shop, not normal, you and a jumper. Yes, this is true. I don't ordinarily wear jumpers, do I? Um, I? I mentioned in the last video, this was actually knitted using the wool that we sell in the shop. A little bit of shameless promotion going on. But it happens to be a very warm jumper, and it's very nice. And I also possibly mentioned the fact that I've got about five heaters in the shop. Uh, there's no central heating in this place. It's uh, an old building. It's got very thick stone walls. But I've had to bring in extra heaters. Uh, what was it? Um, last Saturday into Sunday, I think it was. It was minus eight. Uh, we've had minus temperatures most nights this week. And snow. Yesterday... I don't think I actually saw it stop raining in some form. I, I got up and took the dog for a walk very early yesterday morning and it was sleeting then and then just snowed for the rest of the day. Uh, there's still snow in places on the ground at the moment. So yeah, it really isn't getting very warm here at the moment. And that means obviously the fabric of the shop cools down. So I've brought in the heaters from other buildings, and put them in here just to try and keep the temperature up. Uh, it's working. It's well, it's about 14, 15 degrees in here, which isn't really cold enough to be wearing a jumper, but uncomfortable. All right. And what's the distance between there and there? Well, that is 13 centimetres between there and there, so I'm just going to do a centimetre. So there we go. I'm sticking my head in front of the lens again. I think the next time I make this, I'll make these make these marks before I put these straps on. I think that'd be easier. See that or 
Can I do it that way? No, it's still in the way, isn't it? Well, this is the first of 24 of these, uh, 25 in total. I can make 24 more of these, but I guess I'll get the hang of it as I go along, won't I? Okay. How do I do this? Do you think just a hold bigger like this? It's kind of a method I'm really not used to. It looks to me like on the pattern that a small hole punch has been used. Let's say it looks like quite a thick cord has been used to sew these on. Almost like a small string. Um, a lot thicker than what I ordinarily would use. Excuse me. Okay, it's better. Yeah, so it's a lot thicker than I'd normally use, so I'm just going to figure it out. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Well, I go silent when I'm thinking, and when I'm not thinking, I talk. Quite a nerve-wracking thing, this. To be honest, I'm live. Okay, I appreciate the fact there's only one person watching who has watched me work many times before, currently. But that could change. There we go. Not how I'm used to working at all. Oh, this is probably dry by now. That's the other thing, actually. I've got to put essentially do the same thing. So because it's dry, I can just take that out of there. It won't leave any blue behind. Let's do this in the same fashion. Just uh, mark the holes. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to make it sound creepy. But you have really, haven't you? I mean, you're working here in the shop with us this summer. Admittedly, all I did was run around like had this chicken taking orders for people. You know, for masks and stuff. But 
Oh, I still haven't done the edge on this yet. Ow. Pay attention to where your fingers are, man. Checking I'm not bleeding. <laughs> right, where'd the token art go? I moved things, didn't I? There it is. No. Drop the cloth on the floor. I'm going to sit down for a bit. Okay, so you don't know which one's worse, when I ramble or when I go quiet, but which one's better? comes up so well when you do that. Trying not to DNA tag the um, tag the work. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think either is better or worse. All I do know is that when you shout, either run or put a hammer in hand. Yeah, yeah. It's a fair point. I'll give you that one. <laughs> My daughter's worse. Yeah, she's got she's got this little uh, pillow, like a, it's a made by I, th I think some do call themselves pillow fight or whatever, but they make weapons and pillows. It's a pillow shaped like a weapon, so you can have swords and shields and axes and stuff like that well the same reenactment i place that i went to got this this leather the uh, suede i bought her a mjolnir and it's hilarious uh, she's this delicate little blonde haired girl she's six years old and i've given her a mjolnir and she's run up yeah the hammer pillow yeah she, she's run up to the nearest viking warrior that she can find this guy is huge he's wearing leather plate and mail and um carrying a huge weapon and she just screamed and started smacking him on the knee with it i didn't know whether to laugh hide cower in fear <laughs> the guy just kind of stood there he looked at the little child like this he looked at me and he's looking back, back down and look. And he couldn't make out what to do either. And she's just laying about him with this pillow, screaming me on here at the top of her voice. I'm like, oh God, how am I going to get this child out of here alive? <laughs> but all the reenactors thought it was it was actually quite cute to an extent. <laughs> it was quite funny. But yeah, 
I, I, I really didn't know what to do. <laughs> I put this weapon in her hand and she ran off. And I was like, I've created a monster. <laughs> Yeah, good times, eh? And that was this summer as well. Went up to um, Karen Valley, Dun Karen. Um, I think it's up in Sterling somewhere. Yeah, do you remember the Hammer Pillow? Getting there. It's still a lot faster than the other methods that I've used so far. I meant edge, edge coat was mentioned in the instructions. It's not a product that I've used before. I should probably also mention I'm not actually sponsored by anybody like that for any of this stuff that I mention, be it Alex or, or the Academy or anything like that. I should probably say that as a little disclaimer. I'm not sponsored. I'm using these products because I get on with them and I like them, but I'm not sponsored by them. I mean, I've got five subscribers. <laughs> Who's going to sponsor me? <laughs> Which is brilliant, actually, because I had this time last week I had one subscriber. So I'm dead chuffed. I've got, I think I've got five now. That's not bad. 500% improvement. I'm quite chuffed for that. Let's put those back into there. I'm just going to, yeah, it like they'll work. Right, he come. It's a hot setting. I mean, a really hot setting. Haven't met the hammer pillow. Uh, I don't know if I want to. It's terrifying. It really is terrifying. <laughs> It was a favourite toy for most of the summer after that. It was truly terrifying. There we go. This contact adhesive is quite strong. It should last as long as somebody doesn't give a good solid yank. Even then, I think I'd be able to do something about it. Now then. Whereabouts is that's going to be right on the front of the bag, isn't it? Just thinking. And I hope Alex is all right with this, but I was going to put my mark on it to say that I've made it. Now, obviously, this is not my design, but if I put my mark on it, that's my guarantee. So if somebody were to buy this from me, something goes wrong, then that's how I'd know that I've made it. So I never actually asked Alex if this is okay, but I will do this. But if he has a problem with it, then that's fine. Just let me know. But I'm going to try and figure out. I'll probably still do that once that's been attached in there. See roughly where it would go. But I can put that. Just want my mark there. Somewhere. I shall be back in a second. Oh, you'll be able to see me on the big camera. I'm just going here. I'll just uh, change that. There we go. This is uh, an Arva press here, and um, I've got mine. There are various companies out there that can make these for you. They're, it's just basically a, a brass. 
not to describe it. It's just cut out of a milling machine. That's my the emblem that I use. It says Viking Leathers, and it's got a Mjolnir in the middle and a couple of oak leaves. I'm just going to put that on, the, uh, on top of the lid there. It's a form of a guarantee that I will repair this. If need be. Because this leather is quite thin, I'm going to put another piece of leather underneath it. And that hopefully will give the uh, give the mark, give the uh, metal somewhere to push into. I'm not sure I'll get the right way up as well. Let me look at the picture again. Yeah, I'm going to get that right way up. Put the mark on there and then you sew it onto the, onto the bag and you realise that it's upside down or something like that. Yeah, you can move. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, this is slightly modified, this press. It is designed to, or originally made to, uh, push, the, push the bearings out of wheels. But if you take all that bit off and you put a nice flat plate under here, you've just got this big square piece of metal that will push down. And exert about two and a half tons of pressure. Is that straight? Yeah, let's go with that then. Yeah, yeah. Two and a half tons plus 17 stop. Roughly. All right. And so the leather is quite thin. So it doesn't leave a huge mark, but you can. Just about. Come on, focus. Yeah, you can just about see that on there. there we so now we have the fun of attaching it. Now, let's move that out of the way, that out of the way, and that. So, looking at the image that I have here, if I orientate it that way, it's the same way as the bag itself, just got currently on there. It looks to me like it is roughly there. So the stitches don't go over the edge of the of the uh, suede there. Actually, that that image shows it much further up, doesn't it? That's a fair point. Does the I've lost it. Where's it gone? It was here a moment ago. I was looking at it. I swear. Run away. There it is. Now, I made that strap slightly longer. It is slightly longer because of I didn't fold it over as much because I've got a smaller buckle, so there wasn't so much of an overlap in the back there. So that, that's what that mark there originally would have been. They would have overlapped that much. So as long as I don't cover those holes there, see, I haven't considered that. I've made an, an adjustment to the to the pattern. It's going to have ramifications. Put that there like that. So the strap is going to come that way through these loops and then through that loop. So the buckle should be just below like that because that strap has got to come through underneath there to come through there and then into that. So I can take it a little bit lower like that. This piece is partially covering those two holes, but because the stitching stops there, the um, bong can go behind that. 
This will work. That's me, it'll work. So that's something to note for next time. Just want to make sure I keep that strap right length. This is why we make it live. Yep, okay. So contemplating how to do this. Now, the temptation is to put a, lot, a bead of glue along here to pin this down. What's that under there? Oh, it's one of the... Yeah, temptation is to put a bead of glue along here and hold it down so that whilst I am sewing, and poking this through and stuff, I'll be able to keep it in place. So either that or I've got a couple of little clips. Some small clamps that might normally use for fabrics and things. I won't get that far in though, will I? Flip it on like that. I think a dob of glue is going to be more reliable, isn't it? Just need enough to hold it in place so that I can uh, move it around and sew. I've got to potentially Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. It'll also help give it a bit of strength too. So I'm just going to put it on along the line of the stitching. Oh, there it is. I'm not putting it, I'm not putting the glue right over the actual holes. Probably doesn't come out that clearly. Just putting it to the inside of the line of holes. That were right up there, wasn't it, like that? There we go. Shut down. So hopefully, just give it enough hold whilst I'm working on it, and it won't affect the overall aesthetic either. It's going to be held in place by thread in a minute anyway. What thread to use? Well, that's a similar colour. I've got no idea what I'm just going to use. I'm still going to need to try and use two needles if I can, just to make it that little bit easier. Because uh, it's either that or I've got to sew all the way down there and then sew all the way back again. And there's the danger of piercing your thread every time I do that. So. I'm going to try and still do it with two needles, but I won't do the proper saddle stitch. I'll just poke it through and make sure I don't pierce my thread. And that's some needles right there. And the thing is, these needles have got a point on them, but they're, they're not exactly blunt. They're not sharp either. Thread the needle. I 
blue is just set by about now. Yeah, so as you can see, it's holding. Do I try and put this into the clamp? Let's see how we go, because this is all flippy, floppy, and funny angles and stuff like that. So uh, let's change this back to the webcam. You're supposed to sit down with this, but because the camera's there, I can't really do that because it's behind the counter. Um, you put your leg over the top of this and sit on it. Just put it under the top of your thigh or something. Right. It does do that, it's quite useful, it rotates. So I'm just going to poke a hole with the uh, with all. Hopefully not poking a hole in my finger this time. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Probably going to be amusing to watch, right? Let's just try this. Well, I thought I'd just try this and see if we, if I can get the needle through because the suede's quite tough, but oh, it won't go through. Because it's not the uh, diamond shaped hole, I'm just going to be very careful. Take a little bit more effort to pull it through. I can't pull it tight because it'll make a it'll ripple the suede. Can you imagine trying to do this with like a Bone needle. You know, instead of using a, a metal, a modern metal needle. <laughs> this is the end of the uh no i'm just going to use this the stars is just a lot sharper it's not that easy to hold in your hand whilst you sew as well it's, it all looks very awkward compared to how i normally do it if it doesn't doesn't feel right doesn't feel right. Someone's wandering around outside on the phone. Probably thinking that. They're some privacy without realizing that I'm in here and can hear every word the same. This is certainly going a lot quicker. Uh, one stitch a centimetre instead of seven stitches an inch.
probably guesstimated far too much thread here. It doesn't look like the mic's picking up that person outside, just wandering around having a nap on their phone. <laughs> just realised I brought this needle back through to this side, but I didn't actually need to. So I'm get back through. The reason I'm thinking that I don't need to, instead of doing a back stitch, I'm just going to tie a knot on this side and then melt the threads. Reef knot on there. That's a, a combination of the glue and the stitching will hold this together. Um, okay, so I've tied a, a knot on the back of that. Now, if I melt the thread, that knot will never come undone because it'll be molded together. Should be pretty solid. By putting the glue on down the inside of the thread, the inside of the holes, obviously you, you can't see the glue in there because it's under here. Thus. Right. Um, I suppose it matters. I'm trying to end up with the holes at the same end, but to be honest, as long as it's secure. Now, frustratingly, that's not going to be enough, is it? I have no idea how much thread I was going to use there. So let's use slightly less this time. No, I can see the levels on the screen here. I can see the voice wasn't being picked up. All right, we make these holes.
And again, pay attention to where your fingers are. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. I can remember sewing a bit like this when I first started out. I had uh, still got it in there actually. Got this little safety awl. Um, so safety, it's kind of like a, a safety or a travel awl. And you unscrew the end, and it's basically the handle is a tube. And you can unscrew the end, and you've got a number of different awls and hooks and things inside of it. Uh, I'll have to show it to you in a bit. First awl I ever bought, I bought it. Bought it off eBay. Quite a nice little thing, actually. The idea is, is that you can take the sharp pointy bit and put it inside the handle when you need to travel so you don't have the sharp pointy bit hanging about doing what sharp pointy bits do. It's also got a, a little hooked piece as well that you can use to. Um, kind of uh, describe it. The end is sharp, it's a flat blade, and just behind the blade is a hook. So you can punch the hole, loop the thread over the other side, and then pull it through, uh, and form a loop on the top. And once you've got a loop on the top, you pass the top thread through it, which is exactly what a sewing machine does. It's called hook stitch. Uh, so you can use the uh, use all to do that by hand on, say, something that is not easily going to go into a sewing machine. Yeah, the point I was trying to make was when I first started out doing leather work. All I had was that awl. I didn't have a diamond or stitch, stitching awl. I didn't have uh, proper stitch markers or anything like that. I literally went along with it. Pretty much like you just saw me do. I used a ruler and made a mark with the awl along the line that I wanted to stitch along at even spacings. And then I had a, a piece of wood that I'd uh, partially sunk a bench saw blade into to make a groove up the center. I positioned my line above the groove and took my awl and just pushed it through the holes that I'd made. And that was my stitch holes. Then I'd come along and put the uh, needle and thread through it. It wasn't the easiest way of doing it. So a few YouTube videos later and a couple more purchases. I had some slightly better tools for doing the job. What's going on here? Tight knot here somewhere. Okay. Tighten that one a bit. Any there. And just sew the other bit on. 
pulling through. Okay. I'll be home in time for dinner. So I bought a ball size sewing machine. I'm not entirely sure what you mean there. It's going to do the same thing again. I'm going to sew. Uh, so tie a knot in here, right over left and tuck it under, put it tight, left over right, tuck it under, put it tight, and that's a reef knot. You can tell he went to the Boy Scouts, can't you? Now, I'm just going to hold it to one sideways like that just whilst I do this and attempt to make sure that the heat doesn't damage the leather. There's a lot of heat here. Okay, so that's melted it all. That should uh, stop that from coming undone. Yeah, looking pretty good, isn't it? Let's just see, can I let me make sure that's camera freaks out and tries to focus. There we go. See how it's looking. And that's the opposite side. Okay. So, we just need to do the same thing on here. Again, we'll just put a little bit of glue around the inside of the stitch line. That screen, making sure I've still got my hands in the, in the shot. <laughs> Uh, just checking the image, make sure I get it around the right way still. Yeah. There's the two central ones there. Like that. Let's give this a little press down. Got a few marks to set. That's looking already well, I can show you that there, can't I? Focus. You can see the image on no. This isn't going to plan, is it? No. You get the idea. So once that's sewn on there, I just need to put the thong in around there. And it's done. Ooh. I didn't take too long really either. I just did like a little bit of prep work and just past two hours on the, uh, on the feed there. All right, well, let's do this 
in the same kind of way, shall we? I'll tell you what, the glue's probably still drying. I'll try and do this down here. People outside the shop again. Okay, so that's pre made the holes. The front door of the shop's a little way up, short up an alleyway. Yeah, it's taken a little bit of time. Not not that much time, really, yeah. Yeah. Of course, one stitch per centimetre is a lot faster than seven stitches per inch. Uh, but yeah, saying the shop's just a short way up an alleyway. So people tend to duck up here and make phone calls and things whilst they're waiting for the fish and chips to be ready. Probably going to take a similar amount of thread as last time. A few more stitch holes. Yeah, that'll do. Some people have these little fancy equations that they use to work out how much thread they're going to need based on the thickness of the leather and how many stitches they're using per inch and um, how long it is and stuff like that. I'm like, life is too short. <laughs> I don't do maths anyway. Playing just about use a ruler. Right. Put that back in there, do that. All right. And begin. We'll start down here. On the one hole, hang on, the swan all the way around. Evidently not. <laughs> yeah. And resume. Yeah, if you can do the maths, yeah, everything's fine, but I'm okay with it. I can guesstimate. Do reasonable guesstimations. I can 
little bit of that. Obviously, I've cut out most of the uh, leather and worked on the pattern and all that all printed out and cut out and ready before doing this. Okay, so that is stuff that I only need to do once. The whole intention of doing things this way with myself is to give, hopefully, people the appreciation of how long things actually take and a sense of value because one of the things that my wife and I in particular have had frustrations with and I know a lot of other crafters have frustrations with as well is being approached by a customer for a commission or just to buy something that you've made and having them not quite understand why it's priced the way it is and think that they're being, I think they're being duped. Um, I've had it, and I know a lot of other crafters have as well. Uh, comments along the lines of, "I can go online and buy that for half the price," and there are people out there that will produce items a lot cheaper through whatever their methods are. So, yeah, that happens. It's frustrating when it happens to you. I'm just hoping that maybe this series of videos that I'm doing here help. I know potentially the people that are watching now at this point, if this channel does go further and people come back and watch this after subscribing because I've seen my other videos or something, however it happens, I'm hoping that you'll see the amount of work that goes into something and hopefully gain appreciation for it. Not just think, oh, that's really cool. Oh, that's great. I'm hoping overall people will gain that appreciation. This is fiddly, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a bad estimation for the threat, was it? Okay. Close up again. Attached to there. Yay! 
also just need to finish that off. Uh, all right, over left and tuck it under. Left over right and tuck it under. I'm done with this now. Get rid of it. Melt the ends of this thread. Okay. Right. That out of the way, that out of the way. Let's take, is that the long piece or the short piece? Let's take the long piece, shall we? Just to be on the safe side. Now then, where is it going to gather to? See, the lid's going to come down over the top here, isn't it? So let's start threading it there, possibly. I guess that would make sense because that's going to be the front. So Oh, it does work well, that card, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely a better choice than using black, I think. Glad you told me out that one. I uh, know this doesn't look like it's going to reach, but I'm going to gather it or start gathering it in a bit. Because the bag is never, uh, the spiral is never going to be flat like this. It wouldn't really function all that well. Use as dinner plate. Yeah, you've worked out the right number of holes as well, so it all comes through to the front at this end. That's a pretty impressive pattern. Eh? All, the, all the guesswork's been done for you. <laughs> right, gather that one back. And it goes straight up a little bit there. And. Tie an overhand knot in this bit, just to help hold it. And 
we do this extra bit, I suppose we can get that to the right length in a bit. I'm just going to tap that bit in there for a moment. Out of the way. So that bit comes down through there. That bit goes through there, and then we need to make some holes. They look like they're the right spacings to me. Right. Is that too big? Okay. Easy as that. Could get a different type of uh, different type of buckle on there that kind of works as a keeper as well. Could put a keeper on here. I didn't actually consider that before making this. I think I'll add a keeper to that in a bit. I'll just wrap a piece of leather around here that can hold this down. Um, yeah, the, the buckle on the image here, uh, I've forgotten what they call it, it's like a strap buckle. It's got the uh, it's got the other side of it that allows it to act like a keeper. So a different type of buckle next time. I'll see if I can get hold of some. There we go. There. It's empty at the moment, which doesn't really help because it is such a soft bag. It needs something to fill it out so you can actually see it properly. You can get some paper and stuff it in there or something. I'll get some images of it. Yeah, I like that. That's come out pretty well, hasn't it? I think. What do you think? Let me know. Give me comments. Um, I'll take some decent photos of it. I'll put it up on the website. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy with how that came out. Hmm. If you want, I can make the other two patterns that I've got here. The pipe bag and the book bag. Maybe it could be done, uh, make it a bit longer. Maybe use some dyes. Uh, I've got other leathers here that I can use that are slightly thicker. I'd need those, certainly for the book bag because um, it's quite a, a chunky bag by the looks of things. It's quite, it's capable of holding a couple of books at least. Um, don't know what size, I haven't actually printed it out yet. Yeah, I, I think it would. Uh, it's almost as if, a, uh, yeah, hold on, let me read these questions, these, these comments in the right order. Yeah, it, it, I think it was the right decision not to do a modern stitching style on it and to actually go with what the pattern said. Um, I think it does look more appropriate to the item. Um, it does look like it's been well used already, but that's kind of the rustic nature of the leather that I've used here as well. One second. Uh, sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze there. That wouldn't have been good. Yeah, uh, it does look like it'll work quite nicely. It's a decent sized bag, actually. I mean, you saw the size of the um, saw the size of the piece of suede before I started work on it, so you can imagine that's got quite a volume to it. Um, you could definitely get your lunch inside that. Uh, well, I'm chuffed with that. I so I can make the other ones, the kite bag and the book bag, and do those in a video, but maybe do over a couple of videos and do some tooling to work on it. Um, I've got a variety of stamps here, and I've, I've done a bit of tool work myself in the past as well. Um, here's a sample that I normally show people. Um, so that's an example. It's a, a Celtic ball. I just carved that onto a piece of leather. Well, I had some spare, spare a few hours to do it, because that's the thing. The carving takes a long time. Um, there's another video on this channel, which was a recorded one, where I did a time lapse uh, of an arm guard 
my personal arm guard that I use when I'm doing archery in the back garden, uh, it took 24 hours to carve and dye uh, and colour and everything like that. And it's, it's depicted in, a, in the video, but it's all time-lapsed down to something like 24 minutes. So I've taken 24 hours worth of work down to 24 minutes. And again, that is the kind of point that we're making here. It takes time to do a good job. Uh, this took a few hours here on the stream, but there was maybe another hour of me preparing some of this this uh, leather and working out where I can take the leather from the hide and things so that I don't uh, waste any and don't affect other projects. Because I say the leather I've got, I've got plans for to use for other things. Uh, so I don't want to impact that by taking a chunk out of it that will then render the rest of that hide useless for that project. And then I'll have to buy in more leather. So it's all about it being economical with it as well. Um, hides aren't square. They are shaped like the animal they were taken from. There are marks in them. There are holes in them. Uh, there's thick bits, thin bits. Uh, leather is not consistent. It's not like cardboard or can't be made consistent like wood. Um, there are ways of doing some of that, but then you'd still end up with an odd shape uh, or only a certain percentage of the hide would be usable. So there's a, a lot of factors into this. So I'm probably thinking that this would take me, now I've got it worked out, probably would take me two hours. Um, I will use different leathers next time. I have other leather in here, maybe even a thicker leather for the, the actual reinforcement in the front of the bag, like the pattern suggests. A different buckle. Um, Still possibly using these rivets because I think they look nice and they'll go well, but it all depends on the actual leather that I end up using. So I may be trying to obtain some of the, um, these, these are copper rivets, but you can get them in brass as well. So they get a different color to them, but a similar performance, uh, longevity as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. So, I mean, by all means, please subscribe if you wish. Um, there's a little bell icon, you click that. And next time I go live, you'll be notified. So you'll know what's going on. Um, feel free to comment. I know that our young friend here, Yolki, has been uh, going like fury on the comments, which is brilliant because there are parts where I go quiet. Um, people can ask me questions. I've gone quiet because I'm thinking. Walking is an adage about walking and chewing gum. And then there's this bit where I just ramble like this. Uh, other styles within the sporran itself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a traditional, I, I'm presuming this would be something like a day sporran or a traditional sporran, something you'd actually carry things in. The ones that you see people wearing with uh, their Prince Charlie jackets and um, their ghillie shoes and things like that, they're very much a ceremonial or dress type, type of sporran. Uh, if you've ever handled one of those or looked at them or even worn them, they've only got a gusset of maybe about an inch. You can get your mobile phone and your wallet in it, and that's about it. <laughs> you can't get much else in. Um, as a thought, as a thought, I was going to do sort of a little bit of preparation work as well for um, uh, wet molding. Um, I do have a wet mold that I made. One second. This is one of those unfinished objects that you normally have hanging around in the workshop. Um, but it's a, it's a pouch, a start of a pouch that's been wet molded. Um, you can make leather wet if you don't, aren't already aware of this. You can make leather wet and then mold it around a shape and hold it in place until it dries. And then leather holds that shape. Not all leathers will do this. Veg tanned leathers will do this to varying degrees of success and depending on skill. This is one of the first ones I ever tried, so you can see I've got lots of kind of folds and ripples around it. I, I need to work on it a bit more. It's not the most efficient way of getting a shape, but it's a very good way of getting a shape. And you can get some very nice shapes and quite nice pouches out of it. I was intending this one to be potentially like a sporran, actually, about the same size and shape, um, but being that a little bit deeper and rigid as well. But again, this could be covered in tooling and dyed in certain ways. I've just dyed this one green because I thought uh, 
thought this was a moccasin. I mean, this bit. No, this is supposed to be a pouch. If I ever got around to making it. The lid's over there somewhere as well. I've dyed the lid and everything, but just never had the time to get around to finishing it. It was more of an experimentation. I've got various wet moulds that I've got down there. We make them with a 3D printer. Just mock up a design in CAD and then run the 3D printer and you get your mould. Um, it was just a quick and easy way of doing things and quite accurate. But to stop the ramble, yeah, that's an idea. So people can leave a comment if you like. Tell me what you'd like to see. By all means. Um, and I think I will end the stream there. But I'll say thank you again to um, Alex at uh, Black Rakem Academy for allowing me to do this online, um, live. Whether or not you manage to see this video or not, it would be great if you do, if you've got any comments. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll make your other designs as well. And hopefully I'll also finish your armory course <laughs> at some point. Life is busy. So if I do, That'd be brilliant. Um, I think there'd be a lot of skills there and a lot of information that I could use. Check them out yourself. Subscribe. Possibly subscribe to them too. I don't know. However you wish. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good evening. I should probably go home and get some dinner now. Take care.